Welcome to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast, where we discuss various dog training topics to help you become the best leader for your dog. Marvin Pierce has over 20 years of experience with obedience training for dogs located in the Sherwood, Oregon area. Offering private lessons and group clinics, the dog teacher has been able to change the lives of dog owners by helping them develop and maintain an obedient dog. For more information, contact us at MarvinPierceDogTeacher.com. For me, I think that, <clears throat> like I said, the stress level and anxiety on these dogs is human, normally human created. I mean, we create it by petting, hugging on them too much. And today we was doing a lesson with a big old King Corso, and, and that dog was having a hard time because the lady that owns him and her son were there, and her son's 14, 15, whatever. And I was telling either one of them, and that dog's been here, I think tomorrow will be three weeks, maybe. And I told both of them, I said, don't pet him. That dog would go over and lean on him and push on him and just so they would touch him. And they didn't realize how many times in the past they probably touched him before doing that. But today he was doing it a lot harder, leaning and pushing on him just because they wouldn't touch him where in the past they probably had touched him. And <clears throat> he would just go lay down by himself. And then he would get up and he'd come back over and he'd try again and he'd go lay down. And then he started just wandering around, sniffing everything, checking things out. He didn't need that attention so bad. And I mean, that was within a 30 minute lesson, maybe a little more. But I, I feel he learned so much. And also, did the owner and her son, they learned so much by seeing the difference with that dog when they quit giving him all that affection whenever he was demanding of it. And, I, uh, I think that a lot of times that starts out as a puppy. People don't realize that their little puppy wants to be petted and held and touched and talked to, and people do it rather than getting that puppy to chill out and learn to relax on itself. So I think Brett got the mics backwards and nobody noticed because Mariah's, or Bianca's a little shorter than me, but I don't think it matters. So Brett, we got anything? Uh, I'm still talking in. Nothing yet. <laughs> so, Excuse Bianca, me. if you notice, I was talking about dogs and anxiety. Yeah. Because we see a lot of it, I mean, every day. Yeah. To some degree, you know. Uh, and it could be all different levels of it. I mean, there could be just whining, and there could be dogs just trying to mouth on you because you don't pay attention when they demand it. And there could be dogs that eat the house when you leave them alone. Uh, eat the crates. I mean, uh, we had a pit bull here years ago that... He started chewing out a chain link gate on a dog kennel. And luckily we caught him when he was about halfway out. And we fixed it so it could stay in a place, plastic crate and it was fine. Right. After, it took a while. But he learned to be in a crate and not be trying to eat himself out. And and he never got to the point where he was bloody mouthed and stuff like a lot of dogs do. A lot of dogs really hurt their mouths trying to eat the, uh, whatever type of crate they're in to get out. And, right. Uh, I think the hard thing is for dogs, a lot of times is people never leave them in a crate, it seems like, unless they're going to leave the house. Or, or at night they're going to only. go to bed, yes. And, the, and that's exactly it, too. They, they put them in a crate. They don't teach them the crate. Correct. Like traveling in a car. You don't just put your dog in the car and then leave them in the car. You should start with a... You know, 10-minute drive down the road, not a road trip to Idaho. Right. And that's the thing is, is I tell people all the time that <clears throat> they forget to train their dogs. Being taken for a ride, like you said, for five minutes versus six hours. Uh, putting them in a crate and going to work and being back in six, eight hours. Right, right. You know, Long they don't times. put them in a crate. And I remember we had a little dog that came here, I don't know, two or three years back. <laughs> And Sounds that's like an old a style bomb. phone. That's like a real yeah, <laughs> rotary phone. Rotary phone. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> <clears throat> but we had a little dog come here for a lady, and I mean, it was a Chihuahua mix of some kind. And that lady was traumatized because she could not leave her house without the dog. She couldn't go out to the yard and do yard work for right. five minutes. Yeah. She had to have a house setter, a dog setter to come over, set the dog so she could work in her yard. Right. And she brought that little. I mean, piranha here. I mean, it was so mean. I put gloves on. And I thought the lady would get mad because that dog probably bit me 20 times in like five minutes. 
because I would try to pick it up and I'd try to get it in a crate and it wasn't having nothing to do with anything. But you know, <clears throat> by the time we were done with that dog, she'd come up and done, I don't know, two or three lessons. But that lady, she was older, but she was determined to win. And by golly, we won. The last time I talked to her, she could leave the dog in the house. She said she'd go out the yard, do yard work 30, 45 minutes at a time, and her little dog didn't even care. But I think it was because she stuck through it. But she said when she started, she said, I'd go out on the porch for five minutes. Right. And she said, I'd go back in the house. And right. she said, I'd let my dog out and we'd do whatever. And she said, later, I'd go do it. I had a little bit more time to it. Yeah. And so she won. But sometimes people go to win. They want to start out with two minutes and go to six hours or three hours. And it makes it hard. The dog, uh, Rocky from the shelter guy here today from Newburgh Shelter. And he started barking. I mean, he was going to sit there and bark all day long. And I told the girls, hey, <coughs> they just put a collar on him and shut him up. And uh, I was in there earlier, or after that, I guess. And they had the collar off of him. He wasn't even barking. He was just laying there and watching people walk by. Yeah, it didn't take much at all for him no. to understand. And then now he's just chilling. He's like, this is pretty cool. Up here. Yeah, but it's just a, uh, I mean, <coughs> a serious uh, study type of training, just like yeah. don't work. Yeah, he got out yeah. plenty. It's not like he needed yeah. to. I yeah. took him out already and worked him with a collar and got a little bit of a recall on him and yeah. stuff. Uh, worked on his leash manners a little bit, so he don't have no reason to just be a turd today, other than the fact that maybe he's been one. He's like three years old, and uh, it's just a really nice dog. I mean, he loves people. We haven't had him out with dogs yet, but <clears throat> so. Uh, Got some questions and comments if you're ready. I'm ready. Uh, Jimmy Cabello says, We're here and learning so much every day with Rem and Arlie. Those two dogs are cool. With who? Remington and Arlie, the big dog oh, and yeah. the little dog. I was just talking about Arlie tomorrow. Yeah. Or Remy. You yeah. got Rodney Corbin says, My dog was scared by being rescued from a hurricane. Has very high level of anxiety. <clears throat> very high level of anxiety. You got Margaret Lund says, hi, what are a few things we can do to help your dog build trust in you? Be a leader. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the hard thing is for me <clears throat> with people, and I don't know, I, I think it's really hard. I know it's hard for people to understand. And I was talking to somebody about it day or yesterday during the lesson. You can stand there and try to convince your dog to walk through this building. Right. And they will be worried. But if you right. just, most of the time, if you got a collar on a dog that it won't fall off, where he, and not a harness, because a harness normally, if you pull forward and on the dog goes backwards, the harness comes off. But <clears throat> if you'll just turn your back to the dog and start walking through a building, majority of the time they'll follow you. Right. But if when the dog doesn't follow you, it's because they don't have trust in you, more so than they're worried about what's in the building. They're not so worried about what's in the building. They're worried about you not being a good leader. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard. It hurts people's feelings. I am a full-grown adult, but I'm definitely afraid of the dark. And if we're, like, out hiking and he thought it was funny to be like, what's that? And stopped and froze and looked around like, what was that? You'd I'd probably pee throw myself. Punch him. Yeah. Oh, I hear you <laughs> no, throw I'd be punch so him. scared. <laughs> but if he's like, come on, let's go, then I won't focus on that I'm afraid For of the sure. dark. And the dogs are exactly that way. They are. We stop, the dog starts to freeze and get anxious, nervous, scared, worried, and we stop with them and indicate that we are scared. also not confident yes. in this situation. And that's exactly, I use this scenario a lot, and me and the grandkids now, if it was 10 o'clock at night and they forgot to throw the saddles in the trailer and yeah. we were leaving at 4 yeah. in the morning. And I said, hey, let's run up to the attack room and throw, get the saddles and I throw them in the trailer so we don't forget them in the morning. And they're like, okay, and we start out the door, and I'll be like, there ain't no monsters or nothing, no bears or nothing. You don't have to worry. Right. They'll worry. Yeah. Yeah. But if I say, yeah. hey, let's just go do it, yeah. they'll probably outrun me to the barn. Yeah. And the dogs are the same way. When you start trying to convince these dogs that it's okay, you've already lost. Totally. I mean, you teach them that it's okay by being a leader, that don't worry about things. Yeah. And that's what happens with so many of these dogs. And we fix so many of these dogs. And like I was saying earlier, with anxiety and a, a distrust, and it's kind of sometimes it's the same thing. But I'd I seen a post on there the other day on Facebook somewhere, and 
People are talking about the exact same thing. Their dog is like scared of everything. <clears throat> it's traumatized. It has high anxiety. And the person said, I've tried everything. I'll take it into bed and I cuddle with it and I tell it it's okay and I feed it really good treats and I do I hug it and I talk to it and everything. And you know, the thing is for me is there's so many people on there that give this person so much information. Right. And talk smack about her. And I don't ever talk down to no one for this because it's a yeah, common problem. Yeah, that happens problem. on Facebook all the time. It's pretty... You'll never see me begrade someone yeah. about their training or their dog right. behavior or right. their knowledge of training dogs. Well, and that's usually why they're on those groups is to try and get help because what they're it doing is, is not There's working. so many smack talk to shitheads on there that just want to be a smart ass. And... I don't comment because of the, on these posts because of the fact that I don't want to get into a pissing contest with someone. I agree. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I'm not. No, I'm not any good at it because I will look your address up yeah. and drive over to the house. We do and this say, Let's so talk. that people can come and get help and ask yeah. questions if they want to. And, and for sure, and on Facebook, I mean, you can ask us questions, mm -hmm. and you can ask on my personal page. People do all the time, and I answer to the mm -hmm. best of my knowledge. You know. Right. And I never say I'm the best by no means, you know. I'm, I'm sure to a lot of people I'm not right. <clears throat> but if you see me, like you, if you see me make a mistake working with a dog, you will probably never know it. Correct, yeah. Because I don't care. I just do something different right. that quick yeah. and go yeah. on with it. I don't stop and say, oh, shoot, I just messed up now. And I don't the know dog doesn't do. either because you yeah. know. Yeah. He don't know. The, yeah. the dog don't know what the drill is, and I don't either. And you even talk bitch about it because, or uh, what do you call that? <laughs> Bitching ain't a nice word. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, Complaining? well, smack talking or whatever. But you, is that uh, nicer? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> You ask me, uh, why do I always have an answer when you ask me something? And when I ask you something, you're like, duh, we didn't rehearse this. No, that's a totally different subject. <laughs> you're opening a whole other <laughs> can of worms. It's the Let's same. Go to those. <laughs> it's the same. It is not the I don't same. need to rehearse <laughs> if you ask me a dog question. No, it was not answer. you asking me a question. It was you were asking me this a question what Brett you didn't have get on an video. answer to. <laughs> I have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you ask me a question. Anybody on here tonight, ask me a dog training Read question. Read us some comments. Yeah, I'll give you an answer. <laughs> All right, Margaret said, what are some tips for continuing your training while you're traveling? We have a bunch of other questions, so if you can move through this quick. Oh, I can give you a lot of quick questions or tips on training while you travel. For me, it's so fun because I did a lot of it. I mean, I used to go to Texas, Missouri. Oklahoma. I have a question. Is the dog traveling with you, or are you talking about maintaining training on a dog that you're leaving at home? Go He's with them. Okay. We don't have enough time. Okay, go. What? Just Hurry. Keep going. <laughs> oh, well, for me, you train a dog when you're on a road trip, if you're on a road trip. A lot of things, you can get out of your car, you can stop, get your dog out of the car, let them go to the bathroom on command. You can teach them to go to the bathroom on yeah. command on a road trip. Yeah. When they go to the bathroom, you tell them go potty, and when they yeah. do it, you say good boy, good girl, yeah. and you leave it at that. But you so also, many new places that you could desensitize. Them, <clears> yes, and you could always have them to sit. You can do the leash walk around them. Yeah. You can have them to stay. You can have them to come. I mean, you can load them up in your vehicle. Yeah. I mean, even if you're in a car with a trunk, which I don't even know if people drive anymore or not. You know, you can jump the dog into that. You can load them up into the trunk. Just don't ever practice, haul them in don't there. Shut the door. Yeah, don't don't <laughs> haul them in there. But you can teach them to load up. And that's what I was telling somebody on the playground today about the log. You know, yeah. Put a yeah. word load yeah. up so they learn to load up. You don't normally load down. Yeah. You load up. Yeah. And so if you keep it that simple. So that was a speed question, Brett. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. What's the next one? Uh, Why are we in a hurry? This one's a I'm we have a lot in comments and stuff. Oh, so good. Drew Wrangle says hi there. Just got home from the vet with Chloe. She did so well. While hey, we waiting. were talking about them the other day. Uh, while waiting, even when the other dog in the lobby was losing yes. it. We were wondering the other day. Marvin asked, "I wonder how Chloe oh, was yeah, doing." Oh yeah, little pet. And we're always like, "Well, hopefully they're doing good since we haven't heard from him." And I said that I thought she was doing good because you guys are keeping up with her. So Jason's on thanks here. Thanks for sharing. Jason said, "Hola, what is your suggestion on how to handle when a neighbor approaches you with a dog that is not well trained and immediately starts sniffing nose to nose? 
still want to be friends with the neighbors after the response. Okay. Here's a simple answer. Tell my dog It's is, not more important to be friends with the neighbors than let them disrespect your dog. Well, I wouldn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> but you could. I would. I mean, if it got to the bottom line. But I would start out with, hey, my dog's in training, and I'm teaching my dog you can't do this. It's not acceptable to my dog right, right now. And go uh, there. Right. Yeah, I feel like you can say those things politely. And you can. Saying don't be my like dog Bianca. Is training. Be like Marvin. Oh, Normally it's Marvin and Bianca's like, don't be like Marvin. Everyone be like to Bianca. vote on who yeah. they think is friendlier. <laughs> yeah. But no, it is. But the bottom line for me is always, it's just exactly what Bianca said. Tell them like it is. You know, yeah. I can't do it. But there are polite ways to yes. tell and them. And me, like I just tell them yeah, my dog's yeah. in training. But I don't worry about hurting someone's feelings to advocate for my dog. Me neither. If it's necessary. And I learned that right. the hard way. Yeah, yeah, I do it in a heartbeat if I feel I need to. But always just tell them they're in training and that you're not allowing your dog to do that anymore. Yeah. Okay, Brett, what's up? Okay, we got Jay's. Oh, we already got Jason. Uh, Margaret Lund says, I'd like to build a default calm state in my puppy, Navi, and playful at certain times. Marvin talks about flipping the switch. For what sure. What are some ways we can help <clears throat> this switch in dogs? Always for me, flipping a switch with a dog is literally, you start roughhousing a dog a little bit. I never let a mouth on me. Mm -hmm. But you start roughhousing, then you say sit. And you put it in a set. Because my cow dogs, I've done it with them so many years, they could be running as hard as a dog can run, and I'm like, down and I mean they eat dirt and lay down and my lab I had 30 years ago I done the same thing on a sit that dog could be running as hard as it could across the field and I'd be like sit whistle most of the time if it's very far out and I mean yeah. they would sit on their butt and turn around yeah. but you always want to add the uh the dog's momentum energy level but only go to where you can handle it to start with and then shut it off. You want to keep leveling up then, when you're first you asking do, the pup but to when sit, you it's first, calm. Yes, but when you first do it, if you can't stop it, there's no reason to go up. You went too far. Yes, yeah. you've, you've got to start. And, yeah. you know, we just and sold a repetition, a, repetition, repetition, yes. repetition. We just sold a pup the other day, and the people were so excited about how well-mannered it was. And yeah. It hasn't been worked with a whole lot, but no. it has been worked with correctly yep. enough. It's a well-bred puppy that had just enough of the right interactions yes. for it to learn that. And that's what it is. Okay, Brett. Okay. Uh, we got Nancy said, hi, everyone. Question. Hi. Do you think that some people think that they are a leader just because they own and feed the dog? Oh, yes. a lot. And yeah. some people think they're a leader because they have money and high clout or whatever you call yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. In the world. Yeah. They think they're somebody special. I think that's really hard on people when they're really successful in their career and in life and their dog doesn't respect them. It's not the same. You know, I had a person just in the last month or three mm -hmm. that, I don't know, maybe two or five people that got aggravated with me, believe it or not, because I would not give in to the fact that just because you're important does not mean you're a leader for your dog. Right. You're not. Yeah. yeah. You could be Or just because you're you're tough. You know, I told people like Clay, he worked with the pups the other day. And people can't believe how good Clay, four years old, does with puppies. Yeah. And today we had Jack and Keith in there, and they yeah. had Jack seven and Keith three. Yeah. And they handled the puppies better than most adults because yeah. they didn't, oh, ooh, ah, you're so cute, yeah. and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Them boys was in there to make a couple bucks, yeah. and they done it, you know? Yeah. And for the day with uh, Marley, is that right? Mm-hmm. That pup done so good with those boys, but it done so good with those boys because the owners followed through of what we taught the puppy. From day one, them. they have done everything. That pup come about. in here, it was just like a renegade. She was. <laughs> and she changed so quick and so, I mean, great. I mean, that puppy's so good, but the only reason she's so good is because they followed through with it. Yeah. And that's the thing. Somebody told me today they was here because they needed help. And I was kind of aggravated at the moment. It's hard to think that, but I was. And they're like, hey, that's why we're here. Get yeah. help. I'm yeah. like, that's why I'm here to help you. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. I need to take deep breath, too. <laughs> All right, <Sometimes>. Brett. <laughs> Margaret asked, Bianca, in one of our sessions, you mentioned a pace to help the goopy eyes and small dogs. What was that called again? Oh, crap. I don't remember what it's called, but I it will find it and I will send it to you. I was just a... What? 
You said, oh, crap. I said, no, <laughs> not what it was. Yeah, don't put that in their eyeballs. Yeah. I will find it, and I will send it to you. Okay, Brett. Hugh Penland said, I had trouble figuring out what was meant by be a leader to your dog. Now I just start doing the tune-up drill and be sure my dog is paying attention to me and not going uh, and not going off on his own when I make a turn. <clears throat> you know, and that's one of the things I feel today, uh, Bianca, you were talking, I think, or maybe it was Mariah, I don't know. Uh -oh. That their dog, the person's dog, kept looking up at them, and they were looking up at them for a leadership, mm -hmm. not for a treat. You know, they were looking up to them for a reason. They were looking up to a leader, not a follower, mm -hmm. and it makes a lot of difference. So, Brett, what else? Uh, Jason, uh, Audrey says, watching from Mexico. Hey. Oh, awesome. Man, uh, did you hear? <laughs> I'm going to blast her on Facebook. She danced so hard at her wedding, Gus. You know, the tricolor, cool looking dog. Uh, uh, he's got a really cute muzzle. <laughs> That's not how you're going to recognize The girl that works for us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She danced so hard at her wedding, she fractured her foot. <laughs> I think that's so awesome. Probably alcohol involved in that. <laughs> I doubt it was just like, yeah. I just think that's a fun story, Audrey. <laughs> Sarah Meter says, not a question, but Nellie, our crackhead, did so well when a couple of kids ran up and started petting her while she was on a leash. Oh, hey, we haven't seen them in forever. Hey, Nellie. We uh, still have tons nurses. to work on oh, with leash training, nurses. but thank you guys. Nellie and uh, Rogue, right? The two nurses. They haven't been up in a while. They have treadmills. They work the dogs on the treadmills oh. at home. <laughs> He'll remember you in a second. <laughs> yeah, it takes me a while. Go ahead, Brett. Uh, Audrey says, I saw that eye roll. <laughs> me? Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're, all caught, we're all caught up here. So, you know, for me, it's so fun. And me and Bianca was talking today about our walks in town and set your dogs free one day you know what are we going to do about all the people show up and the fun thing is you know is sometimes people kind of filter out mm -hmm. because they found somewhere else to go with their dogs or, or they, gotten brave enough to yeah, go well yeah i got brave to enough park. to go somewhere yeah. else yeah. with their dog yeah. or they've got someone else now that they can go like now jack likes to go out with uh uh dusty and oh yeah in boston boston yeah yeah and so for me, it's fun, and I don't ever want anybody to think that you hurt our feelings by not being here on Yeah, Monday. that's our ultimate goal. Those people yeah. today, I told them they should try and have Turner come up for one of Remy's <clears throat> lessons. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always fun for me to for people to have other places to go rather than come here. But yeah. we have more people show up in the winter than the summer. We do. On Saturdays, just yeah. because in the summer is all kind yeah. of nice well, stuff. Well, I think a lot of people and, really like the creek. Yeah. Yeah. And the they like the stick. winter weather because it's just crappy weather. So they can do drink I. their coffee and go <laughs> hang out, and it's not 100 degrees. And <clears> they don't have to do work. Yeah, they don't have to work in the yard and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's but, true. You know, it is, like I said, it is fun to hear from everybody. So for anybody that's got comments to make about their dogs, today somebody told us the main reason they brought their dog up is because their friend's dog was so good. Tell Sarah to post an updated picture of Nellie. Their dog was so good. The friend's dog was so good, they brought their dog up and did more than anything with it because they want their dogs to be oh, that yeah. good. Yeah. So it yeah. is. It's fun for people to, to <clears throat> well, just have a cool dog that you don't have to have on a leash all the time. You don't have to hide it in the back room or in the backyard. And You know, we talked, I don't even remember where we were at talking the other day, but in the last 24 years now, I think, like there's not many days that I haven't worked with a dog, mm -hmm. a cow dog of my own or a client dog or Martin Pierce dog teacher since we started this. But I have never yet seen a dog that we couldn't get a recall on. Nope. And I mean... There's only one that it took an extra week. Yeah. But it just amazes me that there's so many excuses, I guess, uh, that people can come up with. I don't even with. know that... I, I think there are definitely a lot of people who make excuses, but you know what I think m most of it is? 
is people who really don't know what they can do or what their dogs can do. Yeah. They really believe it's a limitation of their dog. Especially with, like, <clears throat> you look up Pyrenees. It's like, these dogs can't be off leash. We've had so many of them. Don't tell her, but we don't want more of them. <laughs> You got, a, you got a really good question on TikTok. Someone right. asked, what's one thing you should do after you adopt a dog? You know, we just made a video on this that's going to be going up, but the, it's not so much what you should do as well, what you shouldn't, you shouldn't do. Yeah. You shouldn't <laughs> set hug on them all the time. Yeah. You shouldn't get them addicted to affection and treats. Right. Someone earlier asked, how do you make a dog earn your trust? Or how does your dog earn your trust? And you said, by being a leader. Yeah. Start to add some rules. And teach them to set, you know. Yeah. I mean, even Little eight things. weeks old. Yeah, but don't yeah. try to make them sit there until no. dinner's yeah. over. You don't know? go ham yeah. on training. Don't make them sit while you're eating a cheeseburger in front of them. <laughs> I mean, just set them yeah. and walk them, you know. And don't, I don't, and don't fight them. load them with affection. Yeah, I don't fight them on a leash when they're little puppies, you know. I try to give them more than I take uh, just so we're not in this tug of war mode yeah. until you can get them trained. But that's the hardest thing is uh, teach them like you did with Dixie and them. Put them in a crate. Yeah. Teach them to go in a yeah. crate and hang out without yeah. being locked in yeah. the crates. In and out of the crate. Yeah. Teaching them to go in a crate, not just stuff. And them exercise them if you can. Yeah. Get you a treadmill. Yeah. Midnight and when avoid they get jumping up crying. off the deep end. Don't go to yeah. the dog park where there's a bunch of crazy dogs when you just brought the dog home and find out if it's good with dogs. And yeah, exercise them on a treadmill. Disastrous situations. You, know, you can exercise them on a treadmill and. These dogs, within a week or two, they'll get on a treadmill, and you can walk them, not run them, but you can walk them on a treadmill. A lot of times, not even leash on them. I don't think you should, but you can. Yeah. I mean, not, we had dogs one day. I came in the kennel, and there was three dogs in there and didn't even have leashes on them, and they, all three treadmills were gone. Yeah. And it's like, shit, nobody's even here. <laughs> and y'all are walking around doing whatever, and a dog's running a treadmill. Those, a lot of those dogs do it every day. Yeah, they but they the can get off a treadmill and leave. So these they pups, just that's turn around thing. and yeah, they unload shoot right themselves. Off of them. <laughs> but that's the thing with the puppies. Just don't give them all that affection and love and let them sleep on the couch and you're laughing in the bed and stuff. Yeah. Get the foundation first. And go to all of our later. stuff, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok. Check out a lot of our videos and stuff. We talk yeah. a lot about the puppies. This person said, thank you. I'm thinking of adopting a dog soon, and so I needed some advice. For sure. Yeah, and hop on if here when local. you bring it home if you need help with stuff. Yeah. If they're local, we have a page on our website that has some dogs up for adoption. Yeah. Local. Yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think that... Hey, I'm oh, going to bring up that. now that we do not always eat pie. On yeah. Facebook Live. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we have ice cream. Thanks, Thanks, Thank so, Brett, you got anything else? Yeah, we got a couple more. Uh, Audrey Bed says, Why is Gus reactive in some situations and not others? He's been doing so much better. Gus? But the other day, he randomly, seemingly, I'm sure it wasn't, reacted to a dog that walked by in Wilco to the point that I had to leave the store. Ooh. Well... You know, there's so many times when that happens, something starts and then the owner has a flashback. Yeah, yeah. And it escalates. Where me, I think, if especially if you have an e-collar on your dog, I would chalk him around to the other aisle. Yeah. And then yeah. I'd just have him to sit and stay for a yeah. minute, and I would yeah. start that way rather than leave the store. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times you leave the store, you're going to create a problem for later, and right. your own mind worse yeah. than the dog's. yeah. So, and for me, when Scout would have those mini flashbacks, I would both have the meltdown and then I would not at all pay attention to what I was really doing. And and I also would have periods of time, and Brett, I'm sure, remembers this, where Scout would be doing so good and then, bam, we'd have a bad day and I would regress, not yeah. my dog. And sometimes it'd be because he was doing so good I wasn't doing quite as much or taking yeah. it quite as seriously. And so I had to go back and get a lecture from you and, and then... You know, it and it is that way with people, too, like today in the kennel, not to throw Mariah under the bus, but I'm going to... <laughs> she was just like, oh, I don't know, not even bitches. She was You're just going like... going under the bus again. Yeah, I'm running Mariah. over. But she was just like, rrr, 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 you know, and I see her and she's like, rrr. I mean, she was just, you can tell she was just not in a good mood. But she no. was... <laughs> But she wasn't in a bad mood. You know what I mean? No. It's just weird. She was weird. 
And so I found some Ryan. What the hell's wrong with you? She's like freaking out coffee. <laughs> I'm like, it's that bad? <laughs> I said, Bianca went and got some. She's like, I know. I said, you need to make a cup. You need to like take a deep breath. And this was, what was it, two or three hours after she started? I'd seen her <laughs> running sideways and shit. <laughs> And finally, I just cornered her in the feed room, and I, what the hell? What's wrong with you? I thought maybe somebody ran over a cat or something, but no, she's freaking out of coffee. That's sad. That's what I put up with around here, folks. It's probably learned behavior from someone else. Oh, yeah. whatever. So, Bianca has a question here. That says, Indy is such a cool dog now. We can't thank you guys enough for the transformation. Just one tip. I'd like to know is how to introduce her to strangers. Pick her up. <laughs> yeah, I would. I mean, I would pick her She's up and not tall. baby her. Yeah. Yeah, I'd pick her up and yeah. not baby her and just have somebody that's uh, kind of confident in herself. And just let that person smell her, let her smell that person's hand. And then it, it, for me, I mean, you always want to be careful. But if, like I said, if it's somebody that you're comfortable with, I would like have them to walk right beside me or something mm -hmm. with her, you mm -hmm. know. And then after a little while, I would turn her around backwards and hand her to him, mm -hmm. so she ain't going face to face with him, <laughs> something like that. Remember how we introduced Brett because she didn't like Brett. Uh -huh. Do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so how's uh, Itty Bitty's uh, what do you call it godmother doing? Your mom. <laughs> That's a good um, question. <laughs> really quick. I, think that, I think she's trying. Audrey Beth says, drinks on me at Clancy's forever. Who, for whoever can get Marvis, Mavis to load up in a car. Hey, I'm on it. Who? <laughs> Her other dog. That's yeah, Audrey. we could do it. Who's the other dog? Audrey with Gus. And then... What's got, she going to give me? She said drinks. Drinks on me. You probably want to offer, like, pie. <laughs> to me, though. It'll take probably, like, three minutes. Then, Maybe uh, less. Drew Rangel asked, any tips for getting dogs on treadmills? Bring Chloe over. We'll show you the little pit bull. Don't you run on treadmill here? Yeah. Yeah, just bring her over. The first thing I've learned about getting dogs to go on a treadmill... I just got to put them on there. <laughs> Rest is pretty easy. <laughs> just saying. Uh, we put them on and then we turn the put, treadmill some on. Some people put treats on, though, not the dog. Yeah, but that, yeah, anyways. <laughs> um, we put the dog on the treadmill, get ready to start it holding the leash, and then start the treadmill and speed it up pretty quick. We don't go, like, seven miles an hour, but we don't go too slow. You know, a lot either. of times with a dog, I think, if I'm going to have trouble with it, <clears throat> I'll put the dog by me on the ground and I'll say walk and I'll walk. Then I'll say stop and I'll stop them and I'll do this five or ten times. And when I put them on a treadmill, I'll put them towards the back of the treadmill with me beside them. And I'll have somebody else turn the treadmill on. And right when it starts to move, I'll say walk and yeah. I'll start walking the dog with me. It is a lot different and if it, you're in the heel position. Yes, it'll yeah. help sometimes, not always. But. And don't have your treadmill facing a wall. <laughs> yeah, and mm. a lot of them do, you know. I've seen them on videos that do that work, but mm -hmm. I, I think it's... Not to start. Yeah, I wouldn't do it to start. Margaret said, a video on teaching someone else to growl will be helpful. You know, I try to teach my family, but they haven't <laughs> mastered the famous growl yet. The hard thing about that is that <clears throat> dogs know weakness. And so <laughs> I'm pulling a Marvin where I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but... So anybody can growl, but it doesn't mean <clears throat> anything all the time. It doesn't mean something all the time. Dogs are so funny for me because now I just tell people to say A T at, mm -hmm. and for me, when I was catching the calves the other day that got out and with a bear, I growled at him a couple times. You thought I shot him with a gun because he knew I was pissed because it was hot and was trying to work, and I said something, and he didn't listen. And I'm like, ah, and he's like, holy shit, that's not normal. <laughs> I mean, he ate while well, was in the grass, but, I mean, he was on his belly because he knew I was mad because I'd asked him to stop, like, twice, and he didn't do it. But 
like Bianca just said, the, the growl doesn't mean nothing. It's like, the, I'm going to give you a whipping. Well, nobody says that anymore. I'm going to give you a timeout if I had to count to three. And they start in, and it takes them 30 minutes to get to three. And the dogs are the kind of the same way. And today you talked about somebody handed you a remote and a dog minded. The well, lady handed me the remote today, house. and her dog, I didn't even do nothing to it. And the dog just started minding. And, yeah. And she's like, huh, I don't understand. I'm like, your dog does. Because yeah. I'm going to use it. I'm not going to show it to him. Yeah. I mean, as people, I see people pointing them at them like a laser or something, you know. You got more questions, Brett? Uh, Drew said, yes, got it. That would be good if we could make our schedule work. Uh, Audrey says, pie it is. <laughs> hey, blackberry cobbler's become a hot thing right now. <laughs> now he's making requests. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I dang sure don't want her to bring gooseberry pie or something. What's gooseberry pie? Never mind. You don't even know. This is not very good. Hugh Pendlin says, One trick I've started doing is on hot days, mid-afternoon, walk inside PetSmart around the perimeter aisles. <laughs> They're generally empty or a wider, a wider aisle if passing another dog. Those are not things we recommend. <laughs> Especially with him with boo-boo. <laughs> dog tight and dog. <clears throat> no, he's so confident. Should I go practice with Rue and PetSmart? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you could, though. You could go to Home Depot, you know, anywhere yeah. where they got a lot of yeah. room. Or PetSmart, I guess, yeah. they have that much room. Yeah. But take your dogs in there and train on them and stuff. You see people in videos do it all the time. A lot of dog trainers go in there and train. Yeah. They got air conditioner. got heat. Don't yeah. rain in there. So. Andrew yeah. said, if you can get Mavis in the car, you pick the kind of pie and I'll make it happen. Uh, <laughs> it's on for me and you, not Miyaka. <laughs> That's it. We're all caught up. Got it. All right. So what are we talking now, Bianca? Uh, we threw Mariah under the bus. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, we ain't thrown Kay under the bus forever. Well, we're going to throw her under the bus for I think the reason is because we don't do nothing to get thrown under. She doesn't. She usually comes and asks what to do not to get under the bus. <laughs> she Hugh keeps said, herself out of the way of the bus. Hugh said, try at Home Depot hotter than hell. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, Eliana? Maybe Lowe's air conditioning yeah. is better. <laughs> hey, go to Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher. We got an air conditioner. There you go. <laughs> he left because the dog got hot today. Yeah, yeah. So we had a good turnout today. You know, me and Mariah, I think, was talking today, or was it me and you? I don't think I was out there. I, I think it was me and Mariah. It was me and Mariah. How many dogs that was out there today that came here dog fighting and they couldn't be around dogs? And there was like six or seven. A lot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> six or seven dogs out there that couldn't, couldn't be around walk dogs. By. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty fun. Yeah. And it is a commitment, you know, to people. And I think that's, like I said, some, like little Fenway, he disappeared for a long time. You know, now he's back. They went on vacation. They yeah. left him here. Yeah. Because he's been a little bit honorary. And today he was so good out there on the playground with Mariah. She handled him for a while, and then I think she traded off with Nancy. Well, I handled him too a little bit. But he was being so good. It was, it was just fun to see how good he was being. So uh, we do have a new shelter dog here, I think we said. Rocky. From Newberg Shelter. Rocky. Yeah. He's cool. A uh, little jug-headed dog. Not real big, but really nice dog. And he's three years old, and we have uh, Rio from Homeward Bound Pets in McMinnville. And I really want to push Rio to try to get that dog good home. But, you know, regardless, I mean, if somebody does want him, I'd like to keep him a couple more weeks. Uh, Rio, just to make sure we that he's as good as he presents himself to yeah. me right now. Yeah. I want to take him to town a little bit and walk yeah. him and stuff and get him back into some environments and see how he does, so... Brett Gahan. Nancy McCann said we had nine dogs today. That's awesome. Oh, out here? Yeah. Yeah, and there's like six or seven of them were pretty bad when they got here. Tommy done good. He did. He said it was a great day today, and yeah, Boo is getting overheated. That's bad when a dog gets overheated sitting around. That's guy like me. He might need a de shedding. Huh? Groomed, I think. Don't talk to me about it, because Mariah does my dog, yeah. and I get lectured Groomed, about I think how what that's called. a good job. <laughs> you brush all the dead hair out that yeah. you see flying yeah. around when the wind blows. Yeah. So, uh, 
What do you want to talk about today? I have a question submitted. Oh, we got a question? Yeah, yeah. A couple of those, too. Okay. Uh, Your neighbor has dogs, and you have dogs. You would like them to meet, but you're not really sure if it's a good idea for those dogs to come into your yard or your dogs to go into their yard. You know, that is such a bad deal because for me with my dogs, any dog can come in my dog's world, as you know. Right. And we don't have issues. But what ha- what happens is, for me, first of all, I would try to introduce the dogs, unless it's just two good lab puppies or, you know. Uh, well, I'm going to back up. The way the question is worded, I already answered part of this, but I'll answer it to Facebook Live, was that it's the it's their dog's yard, so they shouldn't really have other dogs come in it, right? Well, you should be able to. But it shouldn't be the dog's yard. Well, the dogs, I don't know. They yeah, they don't own a yard, right? But the That's key to it, the it key starts. to it is most of the time they do, right? You know, right? But right. I think you know, for us, we have dogs that come here and meet, and then they be friends forever after. You know, yeah, yeah. Even anywhere, they're at their own homes or at their friends' house with their dog or whatever. But sometimes they've met here, and that's if it's one of our clients, that's what I always recommend. Right. If we've worked and trained with the dogs, bring them here, and let's get them introduced and get them to be buddies, and then they can go. Yeah. I don't know if Bo and what's his name ever got to go be buddies with. I don't know either. They introduced all four of them here, though. Yeah, they, they did. did. Yeah. And I don't know if they took them out to yeah. play together, but <clears throat> it is. It's really hard to introduce these dogs in backyards if if you're not if you don't have well mannered dogs that's sometimes there's the some yeah there's sometimes when that could be a great scenario and that's if you have dogs that have good manners over here and dogs that have good manners over here yeah. that don't own either yard but it might not even be a good idea to go to a neutral site if each dog doesn't have manners well it you might know, be better I, well but i think yeah it's uh, you know, for us, we always got to remember that, well, we don't have perfect dogs. You or I, I don't no. know nobody's perfect dog. No. But a lot of times people will never have the kind of dogs that you and I own, you know. But even then, their dogs still should have the rights to go play. And as long as they can get along, you know, out here the other day, Drex was, owner was asking me about Emmy Lou and Drex playing pretty rough. He's like, well, how do you know? And I'm like, if I just go out and then both dogs just quit when I said it and walked off. Yeah. He's like, really? I'm like, I can stop it like somebody was talking right. a while ago right. about flipping that switch off. Right. But a lot of times you can't do that. And I mean, I think it's unfair to the dogs. For me, it's unfair to a dog to not have a switch that you can stop it. Right. Uh, just because you can keep them out of so much trouble and they can have so much more freedom. Right. Because you can stop it at any time. So right. it's really hard to introduce. Well, I say it's hard to introduce dogs in the backyard. A lot of people just do it. Yeah, there's a lot of I times mean, they it get go 12, perfectly fine. They get a 12 pack of beer and they go over to their buddy's house and they open the side gate and their dogs run back and forth and play together and life's good. So yeah. it can always happen. Yeah. But you just really got to use caution. Yeah. Suzanne says, hey, Bodie's a perfect dog, winky face. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Not so sure about Poppy, but Bodie is, yeah. So, hey, welcome, Suzanne. We miss you around here. Yeah, we do. We we'll keep waiting for you to come back and hang out. I know. I heard, don't we have some kind of competitions or something that she's been challenged to? No, I invited her to the doodle clinic. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. You bring your doodle. Bring Bodie, too, though. Don't leave Bodie at home. If you bring him, if the you come only up, non-doodle allowed at the yeah. doodle clinic. If you come up with Poppy and not Bodie, it's just going to be bad around here. So, Brett, you got anything else? Uh, yeah, we got some questions on Instagram today. Oh, nice. Um, and so one of them was drop it, like, I asked what instructional videos would you like to see? And so we can just elaborate on We're going to make some videos on these topics, but we can touch on them. One of them is drop it and leave it commands for stubborn dogs. You know, we should have videos out there on that, and I'm not sure that we do. But for me, I go back to a pinch collar, uh, whatever, train on my dog. Uh, I have an e-collar, I train on my dogs. Yeah. I always have a recall on my dogs. And when I start out with a slip leash normally, I start teaching my dog ah, when I touch my collar and my collar chokes just a hair, you know, I 
growl at my dogs, and then I release the pressure instantly. Then when I go to the pinch collar, I do the same thing. And then for me, when I go to the e-collar for the recall of my dogs again, then I, whenever they have anything in their mouth and I, they, I call them to me, they bring it to me. As soon as I touch the ball or frisbee, whatever it is, and I say drop it, they don't. If I growl, they'll instantly open their mouth. I tell them they're a good boy, girl, and I throw it instantly so they can go get it again. Right. And then I repetition, repetition, repetition. And it literally takes usually five minutes to teach a dog to drop something.